I can proudly say that when I entered a new decade of my life, I did not feel left behind. And that's because I wasn't spending the last part of my 20s trying to keep up with everyone and put on this facade that I had it all together. Hell, I had a hard time trying to keep up with myself. Why would I put that extra pressure on myself to be in my lane and everybody else's lane all at the same time? Now, don't get me wrong. I was not perfect in my 20s. I made a lot of decisions that I definitely regretted and had to live with, but I would have preferred to make them in my 20s rather than in my 30s. So in my later 20s, I had a reality check and I knew I needed to change my patterns if I wanted to enter my 30s the best version of myself. So I spent a lot of the earlier years of my 20s hating everything. <laughs> I literally hated everything I did. I hated school, I hated my job. So if even the smallest thing were to present itself as exciting, I was going to do that. And nowadays it's so easy to be easily influenced and choose what's best for the moment to make you feel good in that moment. And back then I did not care how irresponsible I was, what consequences were coming with it. My mindset was was as long as I was feeling good in that moment, it was okay with me. But look, what goes around comes around and you're going to have to face those decisions that you made. And it's better to face them while you're in your 20s rather than figuring it out in your 30s. You don't wanna spend your 30s trying to do patchwork for the decisions you made in your 20s. So this is how I spent the last few years of my 20s preparing myself to be the most successful version of myself before entering my 30s. I have all the chapters in the description listed below so if you're looking for something very specific, go ahead and look in the description. If not, let's get right into it. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is healing. Healing, healing, healing. And specifically, healing relationships. Now this could be a relationship with you or a relationship with somebody else. I would highly advise healing the relationships that are worth healing. For example, I fell out with my dad when I first gave birth to my daughter. We were having a conversation after she was born and a lot of unhealed parts came out of me during that conversation. I said a lot a lot of things that younger me was still hurting from. He said a lot of things that I just did not agree with and that caused us to fall out for three whole years. So fast forward, I reached out to my dad to try to make amends with him and we did, but I didn't feel like he was trying as hard as I was for the relationship. I didn't feel like that effort was there the same way my effort was. So I stopped talking to him again and we fell out for another two years. Fast forward one more time, I reached out again and this time we had a conversation of healing. We both let each other speak, we listened to, what what each other had to say without any expectations from the conversation. It was literally just a healing conversation. There was a lot of tears, a lot of things that needed to be said, but at the end of it, we both knew we wanted a relationship, so we were able to do that. And now, me and my dad have one of the best relationships. I call him for everything, I ask him for advice, he FaceTimes my daughter, which is his grandbaby, and honestly, seeing him have a relationship with my daughter heals a part of younger me that I never thought could be healed. Healing before you go into your 30s is so vital, and I wish more people would talk about that. Going into a new era of your life, holding past feelings, past grudges, or you find yourself replaying old scenarios in your head while you're washing dishes or brushing your teeth, all of that destroys your mental. It destroys you mentally and it destroys you spiritually without you even knowing. So you need to allow yourself time to heal in your 20s. Which brings me to my next topic and this will show you a way to help heal yourself, which is spending time with yourself. I know, I know, I know, everyone is so afraid of being seen alone or being alone or being out out by themselves, especially in your 20s, you're so used to being surrounded with people from high school, from college, you have a large group of friends or whatever it is, you're so used to always being occupied. You have to get comfortable with being unoccupied. I'm telling you right now, you need to make time for yourself. It's more than just taking yourself out to the movies and then posting it and saying you took yourself out on a date. I am talking about intentional quality time for you. You need to go out and explore and surround yourself by things and environments that you would want when you enter into your 30s. That might look like going on a social media cleanse for a weekend, maybe logging out of your apps for a weekend, going on do not disturb, trying out a new class, go try out kickboxing, go try out a pottery class, try out a new hiking trail somewhere near you, go take your dog to a park that's in an area that you see yourself living in, do a staycation in your city or do a staycation somewhere else, even if it's just for one night. Treat yourself to a nice dinner or a nice brunch alone with a beautiful view, just bask in that. Because when you do this, and you spend time alone with yourself, unknowingly, you are setting standards for yourself. You're setting standards for the things that you will and will not allow in your life. So that when certain types of situations or certain types of people occur, you know how to handle them accordingly. You know what you will and will not accept from someone or a situation. Spending time with yourself is to spend time developing standards, true standards that are true to you. Because if you wouldn't allow yourself to treat yourself a certain way, then you damn sure aren't gonna allow someone else to do it to you. 
The next thing I wanna get into, which is so big, especially when you're young, is oversharing. Stop oversharing. I get it, you're young, you want people to be happy for you. You want somebody to know what you accomplished. You want somebody to root for you. You want someone to be excited for you. You want someone to clap for you. But the hard truth is that will not always be the case. And jealousy is a real thing and it exists in people you would have never thought had it. I always say this, oversharing is the quickest way to lose motivation on a goal, an idea, or anything you have set out for yourself. Because when you overshare and you tell somebody something, say you work in retail and all of a sudden you want to be a lawyer. So you go to that person you feel like is going to support you, but really all they're doing is saying all the things that they can't see themselves doing. They can't see themselves being a lawyer. Oh, there's too much reading involved. Oh, you'll never do that because you're not that serious about this. You've already canceled yourself out from achieving becoming a lawyer in the first place. All because people were projecting their own insecurities onto your ideas and you allowed that to happen by oversharing. Sharing. Save yourself the disappointment and just keep it to yourself. And just show out when you're done and you've accomplished it. Because at that point, all they can do is either congratulate you or shut up. And that's the best way to do it. The next thing would be to build a wardrobe. Build your capsule wardrobe. You're probably hearing this all over the place because it's something that is very essential, especially as you're getting older and going into your 30s. The 20s is a very fun time to figure out what your style is, the types of things that you like, and build off of that. Build off of what makes you happy, not with what is trending with what other influencers are wearing build off what you truly love and play around with different things that's how you find your style because i know everyone is into the whole wear it once for the gram and then don't ever wear it again child bye if i am buying an item in store best believe you're about to see me in that item at least five more times and then privately i'm probably wearing it another 20. i don't care if you saw me wear it last week you're gonna see me in it next week too because that's how much i like it fashion is forever changing trends are forever changing so you want to buy pieces that are timeless timeless pieces are items that you can make like five to ten different outfits with just that one piece of clothing they're normally real subtle real basic a nude color but you can jazz it up with anything real timeless jewelry dainty jewelry just things that look very effortless those are the types of things you want to invest in in your 20s so that down the line you aren't spending so much money trying to constantly rebuild your wardrobe to keep up with all the trends you want to make your money go as long as possible and that brings us to our next topic which is expanding your dollar how to make your money go further now this is only for the ones who are responsible with money so you need to take a look at your financial relationship with money and be for real you need to be very very real with yourself because if you do this and you're irresponsible with money all you're gonna do is put yourself in debt and we do not want that for you going into your 30s you want to get a really good credit card that has good benefits that is the key good benefits not just any credit card that's just going to give you a limit and have a super crazy interest rate on it no you want a good good credit card that has really good benefits you want a credit card that has benefits you want a credit card that has points you want a credit card that has rewards that has travel perks because everyone in their 30s wants to travel so you might as well travel for free when you have a debit card the money you spend with that debit card is as far as the dollar amount for that purchase is. That's as far as the money will go. But when you have a credit card, you can expand your dollar. You can turn the money that you use with your credit card into points, into travel points, into miles. That's why it's important to not just get any credit card while you're in your 20s. And when you have this credit card, you wanna use it as if it is a debit card. And when I say that, I mean you're using the credit card with real money that you have available right now to yourself. If you go and pay for a dinner or you pay for gas and the gas came out to like $50 and you use your credit card to do that because you get two times points when you fill up gas with that credit card you are going to immediately put that fifty dollars that is real money from your account back onto that credit card within the next minute this is how you expand your dollar this is how you build good credit this is how you create a healthy credit history especially if you don't have credit history not having credit history is just as bad as having a low credit score when you do this and you're in your 30s or whatever it is when it comes time for you to buy a home to get a, a loan to buy a new vehicle whatever it is you already have a healthy credit history and you've created a healthy spending habit now we're going to get into multiple streams of income and the reason why you need multiple streams of income because one income is way too close to no income now i am a content creator so my streams of income are going to look very different i have affiliate links affiliate programs creator programs i have clickable links and just other things that i have 
passive income for. There are so many opportunities out there to have another stream of income. You gotta do your research and find out what best suits you, your lifestyle, your needs, whatever it is. And what's even better than having multiple streams of income is having passive income. Passive income is income that you make effortlessly or little to no effort or in your sleep. Find that income and really dive deep into that. My next thing would be to always have a goal. I noticed that when I always set a goal out for myself, whether that was short term or long term, I always had something to look forward to. And when you have things to look forward to, it's so much easier to stay on routine to work towards those things. You're able to stay on task, you're able to stay focused, you stay motivated and you keep working towards that goal. You want to find ways to constantly elevate yourself. Whether that be little or big, you wanna be able to add value to yourself. Whether that be taking an online class, a new weight goal, traveling somewhere new, trying out a new restaurant, whatever that is, set that as a goal for yourself and then commit to completing that goal. Developing this mindset in your 20s is what's going to put you ahead of people before you even get to your 30s. Because at this rate, you would have already accomplished so much for yourself in your 20s that by the time your 30s hit, you're already basking in some of the fruits of your labor while everybody else in their 30s is still trying to figure out what they wanna do with their life. And then last and most important is to appreciate time. Believe it or not, your 20s are going to fly by and they fly by fast. I mean, before you know it, you will be in your 30s. Like I turned 30 last summer and I still have not grasped the fact that I am a whole 30 year old. And I say to appreciate time because sometimes when we reach a goal or we accomplish something that we had prayed about, that we journaled about, that we set out for ourselves, that we dreamed about, sometimes when we get there, it's really easy to just skip over the enjoyment of it and go to the next one. You have to give time to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Enjoy that thing you were once praying for. Live in that moment and show the most gratitude you can for that. Showing gratitude and enjoying the things that you have now does a lot and it makes everything so much more worth it. Take your time, enjoy the thing. Time is the only thing on this earth we can never get back. So you might as well enjoy those moments while they're here. These are all things that I have lived through, that I have personally experienced, and a lot of things that I wish I did sooner in my 20s and not so much in the later years of my 20s, but it's also never too late to start. So whether you're trying to go into your 30s full bang or whatever decade it may be for you, this is going to help to project you forward. This helped me in so many areas of my self-development journey in my late 20s, but I promise you if I would have started this sooner in my 20s, everything that I have right now, now, while I'm a 30 year old, I would have had a lot sooner in my 20s if I just knew about this. So take the time to set yourself up for success, for abundance, for prosperity, for loving relationships, for multiple streams of income, for flowing steady income, full prosperity. And I hope by doing this, this brings you one step closer to tapping into your purpose. Make sure y'all follow me on TikTok if you wanna see some short form content of myself or just to keep up with my family. I am on TikTok and on Instagram. I have all of that linked down below in my description and feel free to leave a comment let me know how old you are if you're in your 20s and this was something that was helpful for you if you want to hear more stuff like this if you have any questions let me know down below in the comments i love hearing feedback and what you guys have to say and of course thank you so much for watching this video and i will see you in the next one